Hi everyone and welcome to my channel where I'm going to be teaching you how to solve polynomial equations in the form of a trinomial where a is not 1. So hopefully you've watched some of my other videos that I've had for you on my YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to do these problems along with me or you can always look at the problem on the screen, pause your screen, try it out, and then press play and see how you did. Um, this is my first time recording where I have my video in the corner, so this is new for me. So hopefully this goes well and it's not too cringy. Um, let's see how we do. Okay, so I've got two problems on our screen here. The first one says 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. If you watch my two previous videos on solving polynomial equations, you know that step one is to set the equation equal to 0. And in question number one and question number two, you can see they're both set equal to zero, which is exactly what we need right from the beginning. So that's good. Step one, done. Step two, factor. When we look at a trinomial of 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, what we have to say to ourselves is first, could I factor out a GCF? Is there a GCF of 2, 3, and negative 5? The answer is no. It's just one, and we don't factor out a 1. So here's where we do the method of A times C and then we factor by grouping. Two times negative five is negative 10. The way we get negative 10 is a one times 10 or two times five. And to make them multiply to get a negative, that means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. We need to figure out which factor pair of negative 10, a one and a 10 or a two and a five, is going to give us that positive three. Can you tell? Definitely two and five, right? And if we pick 2 and 5, which one needs to be negative, the 2 or the 5? So that when we add them together, we get a positive 3. Should the 2 be negative or should the 5 be negative? If you said 2, you're correct. So this becomes 2x squared. Bring down the first term. The middle term 3x we now break apart using the factor pair we chose. A negative 2x and a positive 5x. Then we bring down minus 5 equals 0. So let me just backtrack for a moment. <coughs> we did 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. We listed factor pairs to get to 10. We wanted to figure out which factor pair of 10 will give us 3. 1 and 10? No. 2 and 5? Yes, as long as the 2 is negative. A negative 2 and a positive 5 add up to get positive 3. A negative 2 and a positive 5 multiply to get that negative 10. So it works. Now we factor by grouping. I have two videos on factoring by grouping in my YouTube channel, so if this is a new skill for you, you may want to pause, take a look at those, and then come back. But here we take a look. 2x squared minus 2x. My GCF is 2x. If I factor out a 2x, I'm left with x minus 1. Then I find the GCF of my next two terms. The GCF of 5x minus 5 is a positive 5. I'm left with x minus 1. When I have that, I know I'm doing well because I see twins. x minus 1, x minus 1. The factored GCFs go in one factor part of my parentheses, so 2x plus 5. So the 2x and this 5 go together in 1. And one of my twins, the x minus 1, is my other part of my factored form. We also learned that then after setting the equation equal to 0, factoring it, we then last step solve the polynomial equation by setting each factor equal to zero. So 2x plus 5 is equal to zero, x minus 1 equals zero, and we solve. And at this point now, they're just these nice little equations that we've been solving for years. Okay, if I wanted to solve the first one, I would subtract 5, divide by 2. So negative 5 halves is my answer, or negative 2.5 is also good. And x equals 1. And then we list our two solutions. Next one, 6x squared minus 14x plus 4. First thing I want to look at is say, hey, is there a GCF here? 6, 14, and 4. I can definitely factor out a 2. Now some of you might say, or if you've learned this already in your class, that you can technically do this without factoring out a 2. And the answer is actually yes, you can. You will actually get the same solutions at the bottom of the screen. The only issue is it won't be completely factored. If you were just asked to simply factor this trinomial and not solve the equation, you definitely still need to factor GCF out. But follow along with me and we'll see where we go with this. If I factor out a 2 from each one of those terms, everything by 2, here is now what I'm left with. 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. 
that two of a GCF that I factored out in front here, that just hangs out on the outside the whole way through. I don't need to distribute it back in ever. It just kind of hangs out. And I can actually show you, I'm gonna actually keep it on the outside of my work the whole way through. Now I just focus on this trinomial, 3x squared minus 7x plus two. I do the same method that I did here. I do three times two is six. Then I list my factor pairs of six. One times six, two times three. I ask myself, which one of these factor pairs, one and six or two and three, can I get a negative seven out of? One and six or two and three, what do you think? What do you think? It's kind of obvious, right? A one and a six. What kind of one and what kind of six? Both negative. So I bring down my three X squared I break apart my negative 7x into a negative 1x and a negative 6x. I know we don't need the 1 there. I just put it there so that you can follow along with me. Plus 2 equals 0. And you'll notice I put these brackets in because this entire four-term poly is still technically multiplied by that 2 in front. And I actually use that the whole way through. I now take my four-term poly and I do my factor by grouping. In problem 1, we factored out the GCF of the first binomial, and then we factored out the GCF of the second binomial. So we're going to do the exact same thing here. GCF of 3x squared minus 1x is just x. I'd be left with a 3x minus 1 in parentheses. GCF of negative 6x plus 2. Remember, if the binomial starts with a negative, that means we factor out a negative. So here I'd have to factor out a negative 2. And then in parentheses would be 3x minus 1. My final factored form, so I still have that 2 that was hanging out the whole way. I kind of think of it as like the friend that hangs out of the outside of the group. And then in the first parenthesis would be x minus 2, so my GCFs, okay? So this x minus 2 goes in this parenthesis, and then 3x minus 1. I set each factor equal to 0, <clears throat> and then I'm able to solve. If x minus 2 is equal to 0, I get 2. Oh, I can move my screen. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then 3x minus 1 set equal to 0. I would add 1 and then divide by 3. And those are my solutions, 1 third and 2. I like that I could move my screen, guys. I did not know that. Where am I going to put me? Okay. Next two problems. I'm going to move myself up top there. Eh, I'll move myself to the right, maybe. Sorry, I'm playing around with this. Oh, I can make it bigger. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Okay. Sorry, guys, for that. <laughs> I'm new here. I'm new. Okay, so next one, number three. 24x squared minus 22x equals negative three. So the first thing I would ask you is step one. Set the equation equal to zero. Is this equation set equal to zero? No. So what do we do to set it equal to zero? We have to add three. We want zero to be here. So if I add three on both sides, this is what I would then get. 24x squared minus 22x plus three. Now it's at side equal to zero, check one, done. Step two, factor. Always check for a GCF first. Is there a greatest common factor of 24, 22, and three? No. I then do 24 times three, multiply A times C. So 24 times three is 72. Factor pairs of 72, ready? One times 72, two times 36, three times 24, four times 18, six times 12, eight times nine. Find a factor pair that I can somehow get a negative 22 out of. But when I multiply them together, I get a positive 72. 1 and 72? No. 2 and 36? Nope. 3 and 24? No, I get a 21, but it's not enough. 4 and 18? Yeah. What kind of 4 and 18 would you need so that they add to get a negative 22 and they would multiply to get a positive 72? If you said both negative, you're right. 24x squared minus 4x minus 18x plus 3. <coughs> a negative 4 and a negative 18 add up to get negative 22, and they multiply to get that positive 72. 
Now I do my factor by grouping. GCF of 24x squared minus 4x is 4x. If I factor out a 4x, 4x times 6x is 24x squared. 4x times negative 1 is negative 4x. If a binomial starts with a negative, we saw this in the previous problem, I factor out a negative, so a negative 3. Negative 3 times 6x gives me negative 18x. Negative 3 times negative 1 gives me that 3. 4x minus 3 in one factor parenthesis, 6x minus 1. And now at this point, guys, if you're with me here, you've done this so many times. We set each factor pair equal to 0, and we solve. Add 3, divide by 4. Add 1, divide by 6. We have it, 1 6 and 3 fourths. I have three more problems if you still need to hang with me. I'm going to move my video screen over, but I don't want to cover up my work. I'm obsessed, guys. I'm sorry. This is pretty cool. Okay. So at least you can see the work here as I do this one. All right. So first one, 4x cubed plus 18x squared plus 8x equals 0. Step one, set the equation equal to 0. What would you tell me? It's already set equal to 0. Fantastic. Step two, factor out a GCF. 4, 18, and 8. What goes into 4, 18, and 8? A 2. x cubed, x squared, x. Could I factor out an x from each one of those terms? Yes, I can. And GCF here is actually 2x. So this is interesting now. 2x times what is 4x cubed? 2x squared. 2x times 9x would get me 18x squared. And 2x times 4 will get me that 8x. You know how that 2 was hanging out the whole way? I'm going to scroll back up. You know how this GCF of 2 was hanging out the whole way on the outside and we just left it there? That's what this 2x is going to do. Now, here's something. Do you notice I set x minus 2 equal to 0 and 3x minus 1 equal to 0? But I didn't set 2 equal to 0. Because think about it. Could 2 ever be equal to 0? No. But now look what's going to happen here. 2x is going to hang out on the outside, but 2x actually can be set equal to 0. You can get a solution there. We're going to get back to that in just a moment, but something to think about going forward. Okay, ready? 2 times 4, 8. Factor pairs of 8, 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Sorry, it's so tiny on the screen. Which one of these factor pairs, 1 and 8 or 2 and 4, are you going to get a positive 9 out of? 1 and 8, yeah. 2x squared plus 1x plus 8x plus 4. Factor out the GCF, that 2x hangs out on the outside, so I factor out an x. Then in parentheses would be 2x plus 1. I look at 8x plus 4, I factor out a positive 4 to get 2x plus 1. 2x hangs, x plus 4 goes to one part of my factored form. And then 2x plus 1 is the other. There's actually three factors here, guys. 2x, x plus 4, 2x plus 1. And each one of those three gets set equal to 0. There's actually going to be three solutions here. We haven't had that situation yet. If 2x is equal to 0, then my first solution is just 0. x plus 4 equals 0. Second solution is negative 4. And then I would subtract 1, divide by 2 negative one half. So actually I have four solutions here, negative four, negative one half, and zero. And I just listed them in order from least to greatest. So that one's pretty good. You have three solutions, GCF happening here, the same idea of keeping that GCF on the outside like we did in problem two. It all comes together. Last two problems for us. And you can see they don't take up too much space on the page. This is actually the bottom of my notes page. Guys, those of you that are not my regular students in class, these are actually the notes that I would be doing with my students in class. Um, so you get to see exactly what those look like, and you're getting the same explanation that I would be doing in my class. Um, but here we are on YouTube. And this is my first video with my lesson. And you're seeing how crazy I am. But that's okay. All right, anyway. 3x squared plus 7x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, step one, set the equation equal to 0. Done. Step two, factor. 
is there a GCF of 3, 7, and negative 5? No. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Factor pairs of 15 are 1 and 15, 3 and 5. I need to get a positive 7. Will a 1 and a 15 get me a 7? No. Will 3 and 5 get me a 7? No. Did we do something wrong? No. Oh, it simply means it's a prime trinomial. I can get solutions, but right now I don't know how to factor to get those solutions. You're going to be learning later on how to use a specific formula called the quadratic formula in order to get those solutions, but right now it cannot be factored um, the way we want to factor it. So right now we're going to keep that as prime. Last one. 4x squared plus 24x plus 32 equals 0. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. Done. Step 2, factor. I notice that these are all divisible by 4. If I factor a 4 out of each term, I then have x squared plus 6x plus 8. And something really important is to rem remember, we don't always have to do this a times c if it's a trinomial where the a value is really 1. Notice the trinomial originally started out with a 4, but then if we factor out a 4, look at this little baby trinomial that's left, x squared plus 6x plus 8. That's that trinomial where all I have to do is figure out what numbers multiply to get 8 that add up to get 6. 1 times 8? No. 2 times 4? Yes. What kind of 2 and 4 would you need to get a positive 6 or positive? So the 4 is on the outside, then it's x plus 2, x plus 4. It's actually one of those easier trinomial factor. And then we get our two solutions of negative 4 and negative 2 if we set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope, hope that you replay it as much as you need in order to get you through. Um, thank you so much for joining me on this video. And I'll be seeing you as I exit out. Thanks.